முத்து ごめんな。夏を。ごめんな。あ、literally and, and you think you think the clip gonna cut right here, but it's not because I'm still waiting for you to click that like button and the subscribe and the post notification button. This video is going to be a bit different compared to the usual videos because usually I would like to give you a little bit of an intro, you know, build up the anime. But I think at this point, you know that I'm just following up My Hero Academia. And also I did a video on it already. So it's more about focusing on what I had expected and what happened. So it's going to be a bit different, including the fact that I'm not going to tell you about what the anime is about. So, uh, sorry. You know what, fine, I'll tell you what the anime is about, but I'm only gonna do this because last time somebody actually said that the story that I had told was incorrect and kind of weird because I decided to put a twist on it. So I'm actually gonna give you the proper story of what My Hero Academia is. First of all, it's gonna look a bit different compared to what it usually is, but just know that My Hero Academia's animation has switched up and like the character colors. So even though the visuals look different from what the anime is and what you might think My Hero Academia is, this is the true background story of My Hero Academia. So there's this guy called Midoriya. Midoriya has no quirk, which means he doesn't have any superpowers. So what happens is he then becomes a cop but he wants to be a hero. But then one day they call him into a situation that gets weird. Fast forward and he's surrounded by monsters. These monsters are about to cook him and it's getting bad until all of a sudden All Might shows up. Now he doesn't look like All Might, but that's him. And All Might asks Midoriya, hey, um, I might have to middle bend something through you because that guy's holding you hostage and I don't know what to do. And Midoriya's like, ah, sure, do it. He does it. But then when Midoriya's laying on the ground, borderline about to pass because, well, he's bleeding a lot, All Might approaches him and says, hey, do you want to be a hero? And Midoriya's like, yeah, sure. And what happens is All Might then bites him. And when he bites him, Midoriya then gains powers, like vampiric powers, you know, like he's strong and fast and stuff like that. But the problem is he can't just leave like for free. You, you can't just turn into a hero and just go away. So what happens is the entire anime is about Midoriya and All Might working for this certain individual. And that's basically it. It just gets wacky and weird. And ultimately, this is where we're at. And that is the true story of My Hero Academia. There you go. So now we can actually talk about this season. So one of the things that I highlighted in the last video was that I found that My Hero Academia was focusing more on the stories, which was pretty intriguing because this is supposed to be an arc that is filled with battles, and it was. But instead of it just solely fixating on a bunch of brawls, I noticed that there was a huge emphasis on giving out stories, and this presented a pretty interesting opportunity for the anime. Because in the last season before this one, there who came across a pretty interesting problem. He's a hero and Shigaraki's a villain. But in him wanting to be a hero, it means that he's supposed to save people. He's supposed to be the last individual to ever give up on anybody. Because to be a hero is to never give up on trying to be good and also trying to save people. But he had to come to a conclusion of whether he wanted to save Shigaraki or not. Because he had to think about the fact that Shigaraki was so evil that he might have to unalive him and end him. Which kind of presented a pretty interesting interesting symbolic meaning to the last season because in him doing that, that would basically mean that he has admitted that as a hero, he failed and he could not do it. And this brings us to season 7 because in this situation, Deku has a really big question to answer in how is he going to decide how to deal with Shigaraki. And that's a point that's going to be discussed way later actually in the next season. But the thing that I found really intriguing about this season was that we learned that all of these individuals, including the villains, had a lot of motivating factors and reasons that could potentially steer them towards becoming a villain or a hero. It was that fine of a line. 
because an individual like Tentacle, a hero, could have easily went towards the side of villainy based on what happened to him. Because interestingly, when he was dealing with a lot of these individuals who had dealt with discrimination, who had then went towards the side of evil, he still was able to maintain his resolve, but he understood what was happening. And this was pretty profound because I realized that this anime was able to make us really dissect and look at the differences between what can become a hero and what can become a villain. Just as how Tentacope decided to become a hero, Darby decided to become a villain because he was the son of an abusive father. He felt rejection. He basically was mistreated and abandoned. And there are characters who can understand what he went through, but they maybe decided to become heroes and he decided to become a villain. And I think this emphasis on that fine line was something that I wanted to see My Hero Academia explore with. And boy, did it do that. Because I thought to myself, well, My Hero Academia has a lot of characters. So for it to be able to do this, it's gonna be really difficult to try and explain every individual's actions. Because mind you, this is an arc filled with battles, but yet My Hero Academia was was able to give us the motivating factor and wind behind each of those retrospective punches. These battles weren't just normal battles. Now mind you, there were a lot of battles. You had your pick of fights, there were too many fights. But the thing is they weren't these empty fights of good versus evil. There were interactions in which these individuals had their own valid reasons for why they decided to go against their path. And depending on how you view them, they might be either seen as villains or rebels. And the heroes might be seen that way as well, they might be perceived as individuals who are trying to stop progress for these people who are perceived as villains. So it was such a cool interaction that was laid out within the stories and My Hero Academia was able to actually succeed in displaying this despite having a large cast. Because in this season, My Hero Academia actually broke a cardinal sin in that My Hero Academia would have fights, halfway they're like, hey, let's just tell you a story about somebody. And they'd tell you a story and then they'd return to the fight at the end end of the anime. No, God, please, no, no, no. And usually this is one of the worst things you could do in anime. But because the stories were so captivating and so motivating that sometimes the stories of the villains or the heroes being told in between the fights, all for one is fighting this side, but we're getting a story about other individuals like Ochako, it still was so impactful that it didn't actually affect the episodes. And mind you, there were so many amazing stories within this anime this season that I literally made shorts about it every single week because it was just that fun. But also I knew that I couldn't cover every single story. And actually I would talk more about the stories than the actual fights because that's just how much of an amazing job My Hero Academia did with really letting us know what is the motivating factor between these characters. And when they finally get an opportunity to express themselves in battle, it wasn't really the battle that had the importance. It was more about the message from one person to another person being received. Yes, Darby is like lashing out and losing his mind. But the main message is being sent towards his family that you hurt me and they finally received it. In their own response to that message, they let him know that they're sorry and they're going to try everything to try and save him. And that was pretty cool. But oddly enough, my favorite story of the entire season came from a character who I kind of didn't like. And that was Gentle Criminal. Because me and Gentle Criminal go way back based on the fact that I did not like him as a villain. I got his message, but I just didn't like him. And what ultimately happened when he showed up, he kind of justified my thinking of him in the past. He's a horrible villain because truthfully, He's a great hero. And what happened in his episode was nothing short of amazing. In fact, it's one of the episodes where I cried because his story was just so strong. He basically was an individual who was sent towards damnation because he just wanted to help. He wanted to be a hero, but he didn't know how. And ultimately, it resulted in him becoming seen as a villain because he didn't do the job correctly. And this really hit home because interestingly enough about Gentle Criminal, I found his story to really be similar to the story of Deku and All Might in that they were characters who didn't necessarily know how to become heroes, but they knew when it was time to just try. Deku initially was seen by All Might as an individual who could be a successor based on the fact that when everything just seemed to be chaotic, he ran forward and without thinking, 
he decided to do something to try and be a hero. And that's pretty similar to what Gentle Criminal did. Because he didn't know how to become a hero but he knew that he had to try and do something. But it just didn't work out that way. And ultimately he was perceived as a villain when truthfully he just did what was right. He wanted to help. And watching him get this moment to finally prove himself was bigger than I even thought it would be. Because in his interaction with La Brava who basically basically to him is everything. It finally clicked because yes La Brava is this cute character but she's such a powerful character for Gentle Criminal because she's that one person. In life a lot of things can happen but if you sometimes just have that one person who believes in you it can change everything and for Gentle Criminal La Brava is that because she believed that Gentle Criminal could become a great individual. She's always believed that no matter what happened. And when that opportunity presented itself, an opportunity that is so rare for a lot of people to finally justify somebody's belief in you, he decided to put his life on the line to make sure that La Brava understood that because you believed in me, I'll show you that I can be the person that you believed in. And he did it. I lost it. I, I cried all the time when I thought about that scene because I understood that. In life, a lot of things can happen. And oftentimes, depending on how you deal with that, you can feel like you're nothing. You can feel like you don't deserve anything. You don't belong. But sometimes if you're fortunate enough to come across a person who's able to believe in you, it can change everything. And honestly, when you analyze the anime, I'm not trying to get too emotional. When you analyze the anime, a lot of these characters could have been in a different path, especially the villains. If somebody had just believed in them, if somebody had just been there for them, their stories would have been entirely different. And honestly, this is a very common story that happens in real life. And that's why I found Gentle Criminal's story to be so powerful. Yet it's one of the most shortest stories of the season. The fact that this anime decided that it would take as many episodes as it needed to make sure that every single character could get their story told and ultimately be impactful was one of the best decisions I've ever seen come from a shonen. Because a lot of anime get rushed into trying to give you short, impactful things. So a bunch of fights, a bunch of fights. And oftentimes when everything is gone, even though from a weekly basis people find it to be impressive, they lack substance. It showed that the people behind this anime care about the characters. So I've been giving nothing but props to this anime. And at some point I should give the negatives as that's fair, right? And uh, truthfully, I don't have any. What? But if I want to be petty, I do have three. The first one, the people who said that best genus was him and they cooked me, which is okay. Please tell me what he did because the season ended and uh, all I remember was he was one of the best supporting characters. His job was basically watching people. Number two, this is actually something that I really think about a lot, but can somebody please explain to me what was Lemillion trying to do when he literally went underground and showed Shigaraki his butt and then was crying? Come on now, dog. Come on, man. To this day, I still don't understand what he was trying to do. Because I'm weird, I've come up with three things. One, he was going to do a butt uppercut, which is hard, but it's possible. So he was maybe going to sink. Shigaraki comes close, you know, he's running, jumps up and hits him with his butt. The butt is a pretty strong muscle. So it's possible he was going to knock him out. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Number two, maybe he was going to fall on him. Now, that's a tricky one because he needs to get really close for that to happen. And the last one, I don't want to elaborate on, but it was weird. And I still don't know why he did that. And then the last one, well, I noticed that a few people made a few comments about the fact that there was CGI at the last episode with All Might. And honestly, I don't think it justified really becoming a problem because it was actually good. It wasn't that bad. Besides that, there's nothing really negative to complain about in terms of this anime. But the last thing that I have to talk about and give this anime props on was the OST. 
because the OST was amazing. It was one of the driving points to the entire stories. Like the stories were amazing, but if you add an amazing OST to the stories, they go to another level. And that is what this season did. So it's basically almost perfect. And even if you don't really watch My Hero Academia that much, just watch this season and you'll understand how impactful the last season is and the other seasons that you might have skipped or thought was mid or didn't want to watch. But for those who did give it a chance, I think that we're all excited to see what's going to happen. Because if it's anything close to what this season was, it's going to be a beautiful ending to a beautiful anime that deserves so much.